Hello everyone. Welcome back to the table. So what we're going to do now is assemble this. Uh, what we've done in previous video up to this point is we did an unboxing where we saw all the ships that come in the Royal Navy Fleet starter box. Then we did a specifically a video trying to clean up and show you what it's like to deal with the pewter that comes with the first rate ship and get those pieces prepared and ready for uh, you know dry fitting and, and final gluing. And that's what we're going to do today is dry fit and final gluing. Now, one thing I could do, like if I was going to paint, I could probably glue the masts in last. That way it's easier to paint. And that might be what we do. So what exactly can I attach here then? Well, actually, not, not too many pieces. Uh, if I just set the masts aside, let's see, that's not mast. The bow sprit I will attach. Now, this thing was super, super crooked, and it took a while for me to get that somewhat straightened out. So I'm hoping that once we glue it into position, it will look good. And it is a little tricky. It had... Let's see if I can hold this and not block the lighting too much but it's got kind of like these horns here and there's a little notch here on the front of the ship where those horns can kind of rest into and then on the bottom here it's got a couple of little notches and a spot right here where I can see it's all supposed to rest and connect so the trick will be then getting enough glue on here and then holding it in place long enough to kind of set and catch and, and dry and hopefully dry into a really sturdy connection. Whew, that's the part I'm afraid of is always finding the right glue. Um, I've tried a couple different super glues. This glue that I have here is just regular super glue gel. It takes a moment for it to start to set up. The gel lets me slide things around just a little bit but then finally once it dries and catches it seems to hold really tight. So I'm just dry fitting right now before I throw down a bunch of glue. That way I know I'm kind of putting this in the right spot. And again, that gel is going to give me a second or two to kind of get, you know, any last minute attachments or, you know, last minute fiddles if I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my gel. And I'll put some along here. I mean, you don't want to like put too much, but at the same time, you gotta make sure you have enough so when it does decide to dry, there's actually glue touching as many of the parts as possible. Okay, here we go. First glued item. And then trying to make sure it's lined up. And I can tell I kind of bent some stuff here trying to get it yeah, and I kind of messed up there already. All right, come on. That's why I'm glad I got the gel. The gel just gives me a couple seconds to finalize the fitting. And I think we got it here. It's fitting in. There's a couple of notches here in the bowsprit, which line up perfectly with the cannons. So that might be a little hard to see on the camera. So I think we've got it that way left and right then once this is dry uh, we'll be able to take a better look here because again it's just a matter of getting these big pieces to sit right I'm looking to see that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get that that's pretty good yeah just trying to look at that that's about as straight now I tell you, looking through the lens of the camera here, the little camera screen, maybe if I get that more under, that might look more straight. But here, looking down on it in person, that's probably about as straight as it's gonna get. So we're gonna let that dry. Whew. Now the figurehead, I think I just, I moved that off here. Now the figurehead I had chosen, this is a Poseidon. You can barely see his little tiny trident on here. So I figure that was supposed to be Poseidon. I don't know if that will even focus in. There you go. There's this little trident. And I thought, 
that was really cool. Um, there is, I'm going to file this down a little bit. I didn't prepare him as good as I thought I did. So that means I probably didn't even prep him. <laughs> so we'll just take the file and get this little spur that I saw there. And we're going to just dry fit real quick to see how it, how it gets in there. Mm. And he goes right up against the mast. I tried to dry fit them a little bit to kind of see how they would fit together. And I'm hoping that once everything is kind of drying in place and I bend stuff the way I want, the figurehead is going to help support the mast. So already you can see there's a little off center with that mast. So once I get him glued in, then I can adjust that bowsprit mast just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the glue. And I'm going to have to get a new bottle soon. This is just about empty and then it's really gunked over horribly. All right, there's a generous amount of glue. All right, Poseidon, don't fail me now. All right, so he's on there. Okay, so again, just a matter of letting that glue dry, cure a little bit, and then I can do some final bends to try and make everything look straight and aligned with one another. So initial initial placement is not too shabby, not too shabby. But if I was to try and manipulate that now, that glue has not had a chance to fully uh, curate so or cure. So it's just going to snap or rip away as soon as I really try to start to meddle with stuff. So what we'll do is just kind of leave those there for now. So there we go. You got the bowsprit on there. I've got the figurehead. Uh, you know, I might not need to bend that as much as I thought. The figurehead could be tilted a little bit. Let's see. I'm impatient. I really want to bend this now. I just bent it a little bit. Just a little bit. That looks a little better. <laughs> it's just, it's so tough. It's like, ah, ah, you know, you take the good with the bad. So we're going to, we're going to leave it at that. Because again, if you over mess it, it's, it's going to be horrible if you just keep trying to bend it and straighten it. It's not going to get any better. All right, so there's that. So we got the bowsprit. We got the figurehead on. Boom, there you go. Now we're starting to look like a ship. Okay, what I'm going to do here, now the problem with this one is the tweezers can help me lower this into place, but the problem is getting the glue just right because uh, too much glue is definitely going to muck it up. So let's let's see what we can do on the glue here. Again, that gel gives me a couple seconds that I can actually put the glue and then grab the piece I want and place it without immediately drying. Come on. Then I gotta make sure it's level. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Front to back, the planking looks evenly spaced. Looks like there's just enough glue to kind of hold that in place. All right. Okay, well that worked out so much better than I thought it would. Now, this is the part where I have to decide do I want to put the ship. I guess I could paint these and then glue them later and that's probably what I'm going to do. So I am going to put these here only because um, well I do like being able to see down in here and there's just a little bit of detail and once you kind of uh, spray paint it it's easier to see in there and then the, the boats obviously these little boats covered up tremendously but the thing is it's not like there's a whole lot to see down in there. I think if somebody really leaned in, you could tell, you know, you could tell that there's things underneath. You could see some of it. So I'll probably will add the boats, but I'm going to add the boats later just so it'll be easier to paint. Or maybe do it now. 
Hmm. Choices, choices. Yeah, I think I'll I'll do the boats later. It'll be easier to paint the holes white and then paint the inside with them not attached. And then, you know, the super glue doesn't matter. You just glue and set them down there. So we'll do the we'll attach those boats later. Now we do got a couple of boats. These are I got a couple of free floating boats, so I'll just set those aside. But there's some here. These have the the attachments because they go on the back here is what the picture was showing me and I'm gonna put those on now because I can paint those while they're not attached now this has a couple birds I thought I got these I must have only did yeah I didn't do this very well that one's got a pretty nasty burr not anymore Okay, so let's see here, ship, that's going to glue in there, uh, it looks like, yeah, we're going to do it this way. So again, just kind of dry fitting to get an idea of how I want that to fit on there. So it might not exactly match how it's supposed to, but I think once I have it on there, I'll show it to you. It will look pretty good. It will look good. Let's find the glue. Don't want that one there. Okay, I'm going to give that a second to catch for the glue. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Looks good hanging off there. Yes, that's nice. All right. And then we're going to do the one over here. on. Again, we're going to hold it there for a few seconds. Apparently not long enough. All right, let's just count. I'm looking at my timer. I'm going to hold it here for 20 more seconds. 20 seconds is a long time if you don't say anything. So, yeah, you've been watching any good TV shows lately? How about Mandalorian? We have, uh, we got that today to watch. It's Friday when I'm filming this. You might not watch this on Friday, but uh, got Mandalorian, which we are thoroughly enjoying. Okay, there you go, 20 seconds. All right, and there you go. Now we've got a couple of ships hanging off the back for emergency purposes. You never know when this might get sunk. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of the uh, captain must go down with the ship kind of philosophy, but um, the rest of us, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hop in a boat and go to safety. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is I've got this boat now off the back. Eh, eh. Just trying to get these equally bent. Here, it's gonna hang right off the back here. So I think those look good. So we're gonna take a big old dab of glue. And I think this glue, this particular bottle of glue I have is just about done. Now I apologize if you are a expert pewter and resin modeler. If I'm doing things wrong, apologize. I don't do a lot of pewter and resin. Plastic is where it's at. But since this is pewter and resin, I'm figuring it out as I go along. Okay, so we've got some glue there. Now I'm going to bend that ship down a little bit so it looks more natural hanging straight down. There we go. Now we've got the ship hanging off the back. Yeah, that's like even with the water. 
yeah, that's like flat with the water. I don't know if that's, I figured they would hang a little higher, but this is like right on the water. So cool, there's that. All right, the last thing is, like I said, I'm gonna wait on gluing the masts in to their final spot after the whole thing is painted. That way um, it'll be easier for me to get in here and paint and do stuff with the masts gone. So the masks will be the last thing that I glue in. And I'll paint them completely separate. And the detail on those isn't too bad. I was looking right here. Uh, for, I thought this was a big jangled mess of stuff, but once I look here, I can see the lights catching it. So that's got a lot of good sail folds and they look pretty good. The masks won't look too shabby. And then once I get them glued in place, I can make final you know, bends and get them all as straight as possible. Kind of like what I did here with the bowsprit. And again, looking through the the camera, it looks bent horribly, like it's really bent that way. But here in person, it's uh, not that bad actually. So I can kind of fiddle a little bit. Yeah, and that looks pretty good there. But again, I think it's just the, the angle, the camera. But if I line it up on that line here, if I line the, the center of the ship, yeah, I'm following the lines of the mat here, and this is pretty good, pretty spot on. So I, th I think we did good. I think we got it. So last, as I let that dry, and I'll come back to that, you know, much later. Probably tomorrow, I'm gonna spray it with a base coat and start painting. But I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna give this a lot of time to dry. So what I am gonna do though is on this here real quick before we call it done, is I'm gonna just glue on these last two parts here. Now, the first rate instructions. It didn't really, okay, so it says this is going to attach right about here. That's what it says, reality is, not going to fit there. It's going to fit down here a little bit, but it's not necessarily at the bottom. So if you can see here, there's a part here that's kind of beefed out. It's got like extra wrapping. And then this is going to fit in, not quite exactly below it, but it fits into um, between some of the wrapping, like one notch down. So I'm going to fit it here like that. And I'm going to glue it in place. Then I can make any final like bends because right now it sits in pretty good like that. And if I need to later, I can bend that down so it fits the sail, but that will come later. I am gonna line this up more though real quick before I glue it. And this is why dry fitting is so important is to try and find you know exactly where things are gonna fit and where not to overbend because I just totally bent the crud out of that. <laughs> I bent that horribly the bottom of the mass trying to fit that little part in. Oh, I hate pewter. Pewter and I are not good friends. We work together, but... <sighs> All right, one more time here. Where do you wanna go? I wanna go right in here. All right, so dry fit wise, I think we'll be okay. And then later I can bend that down as needed, but that's kind of lined up here. So we're gonna go ahead and put a big old dab of glue and then stick that back in place. Glue, glorious glue. Come on. All right. There we go. We've finagled that in a lot better. You can tell it's not entirely centered where I want it. So I'm just gonna carefully move it around a little bit. I don't wanna re-over bend it. Okay. That's gonna work. It's glued. 
All right, then the top one, this is the short one, so that's that's about good. And the picture shows that it actually goes right up here, which is mostly true. Now, it says the bottom one should be fairly straight, so I'm going to bend that down ever so slightly here. And this one, it comes up at an angle. So I'm just seeing how it dry fits in at that angle. And it'll be, it'll be about like that, which is a, about what it is on the plastic kits. And then because it's pewter, I can bend that a little bit to make it fit better if I need to. So I'm going to pull that out. Oops. Oh no. It's all coming apart. There we go. All right, so we're going to glue that again with a generous amount of this gel and slide that back into place. There you go. There you go. That's what you wanted, right? Like that, maybe somewhere in there. There we go. Perfect. I just kind of make sure those line up. Then what you can do, and I didn't pull that off yet, but you can actually grab that back. I think that's the mizzen mast, right? You get that mizzen sail. But for right now, I just want to make sure I get this lined back up somewhat straight. I'm just kind of holding it. Mm. Yeah. There we go. I'm, again, it's just bend it, trial and error. I think we got that on there pretty lined up. And again, that's going to come down just a little bit. That's kind of supposed to be flat. There we go. And the glue will dry that in place. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not going to glue that in. But I think that's going to fit just fine. And that's going to look pretty good on the ship there. Once we get it all in place. And that's going to take time to dry. Oh, I bumped it. Always something. All right, I think that's about it. All right, so that is about all the assembly I can do on the first rate until it's painted and the masts will go on last. And then, like I said, I'll probably add the boats there at the very end, but I'm going to paint those separately. So we have a pretty good amount of, of extra detail on there. So you've got the bowsprit, we got the Poseidon figurehead, then we have the boat hanging off the back, the big boat. And then you've got these two little side boats there that are attached and hanging. And this little metal part here for the hole. And that's basically all it was. You didn't, since this was like a single resin cast, you didn't have to, to worry about putting the sides together and putting in the back. Uh, this has loads of detail just in that single casting. And that'll do it. That is assembly. Well, I appreciate you hanging out and watching that. Just in case you were curious what these kits were like and, and how they fit together before you purchase it. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what you're getting into. And again, if you're already like a, a resin and pewter you know, expert, because a lot of the stuff from Warlord is that way, I've noticed. Um, but I don't have a lot of Warlord kit. And a lot of what I have, it's all plastic. So this is actually the first uh, metal pewter and resin that I've gotten from Warlord. I did get a resin kit uh, for Flames of War. It was a, a howitzer that just happened to have some resin and pewter and that was horrible. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, how can people work in this? But um, I can see at least if you get a good solid cast like this, this is a nice heavy chunk of resin and that's going to sit very nice on the table. And that only comes to mind now while I let this dry is um, some people, they will base these. I think these for, you know, 
uh, Black Seas, and maybe if you use these in other war games, are big enough. They might not need to be based, and they're very stable, and they have a lot of weight to them. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this goes once I get it painted and all glued together, what I want to do with it. I haven't based any of the other ships yet, so I might not base this one, but um, yeah, we'll see how it looks when it's all done. Now when I come back and paint this, I probably won't do a separate painting video. I'll probably just wait till it's all done and we'll do a rigging video so you can see how the rigging of the first rate goes, which the rigging should be the same. That is something though that I did not notice is there still is not like a separate rigging guide. So there's a little rigging diagram in the back of the main rule book that I've been using, or you can go to the Warlord game website and they have that, that same document, but you can print it off and have that as an individual sheet. So that's probably what I'll do here. And since this has three masts, this should go together exactly as the uh, instructions in the back of the main rule book goes. So we'll see how it is when it's all done. So again, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you. It'll be from the time you see, I'm posting all, um, record all this in one day. So by the time you get done seeing all of this, hopefully um, we'll have a nice little series of construction, all the way through to a rigging at the end. So if I time this right, uh, this will be a nice several part series all back to back. So thank you for tuning in. And if it turns out not to be a nice back to back series, ah, uh, you know, sorry. That's what you get, I'm not a professional. <laughs> so you get what you pay for. All right, thanks a lot, bye.